I bet you've heard the phrase that money doesn't grow on trees. Well, in the metaphorical sense, it actually does. If you aspire to be wealthy, then you have to learn how to plant these seeds so you can start growing your money trees. Oh hey, didn't see you there. During that nap, I was making money from about five different places. I'm not saying that to flex or brag, I'm saying that because if I can do it, then you can too. And in fact, anybody can do this. And I mean literally anyone. Having these passive income streams buys you freedom not only financially, but physically as well. If you stick around for the next few minutes, I'm going to tell you exactly how I built each of these passive income streams, how much I make from each one, and how you can build them as well. And uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Yeah, do what, do what he said. So the first passive income stream on this list is Etsy. Etsy was the first ever automated business that I created and we grossed around $3,500 a year. About half of that is actually profit, so around $1,750 a year. And that's not that much. However, you have to keep in mind that I honestly do not work for this money. I maybe put in, you know, an hour every two weeks. So I'm gonna tell you how to build a successful Etsy store in three steps. And the first step is to find your product. You really want to find a product that's niche, so not too big, like you don't want to be selling, I don't know, like basketballs, because there's a million other people selling basketballs who are probably better at it than you. And if your goal is automation, you have to make sure that this product can be automated. You don't want to do something that requires a ton of work. So for example, you probably wouldn't want to do wood sculpting or like wood carvings, because that would require a lot of work done by you. You want something that you literally do not have to put any work into, or you can hire somebody else to do it. In my opinion, print on demand products are the best way to do this. Now, once you've spent a bit of time building this business up, and honestly, all businesses take a little bit of time to start up in the beginning, so don't think that you have to have it completely passive from the beginning. Your goal is to get there eventually. So the second step is to hire out or automate this business. My Etsy business actually sells physical products, so I have to hire out the work. And to do this with a digital product, you'll probably just use some sort of automation service. So the goal with an automated business is that you can just oversee the entire process and you don't have to do any work, you know, shipping out products, creating products, that should all be outsourced. The third step is to just repeat steps one and two over and over again. The more products you have, the more passive income you'll make. And since Etsy is kind of like a search engine where people search for products, the more products you have out there, the more likely people are to find your products. Overall, Etsy is a great platform to make some passive income on, and you really can't go wrong by starting a store. Worst case scenario, you don't sell anything, you wasted a little bit of time, but at least you started trying. That's the key, is to just start trying. So, the second passive income stream on this list is Instagram. Now, I own an Instagram page with 134,000 followers, Definitely did not grow that overnight. It took me around a year to grow that much, but this passive income stream generates me a couple hundred dollars every month, and I do absolutely no work on it. Now, definitely don't get the misconception that you need hundreds of thousands of followers to make money on Instagram, especially if you're a personal brand, if it's your own personal page, you can make money with a lot less followers than that. And the income on Instagram can really vary. It honestly depends on how much work you're willing to put in. There was this time where I spent around a week working on this dropshipping store and I made around $400 in one day. Now, obviously, that's not every day, but having that Instagram page gives you the opportunity to make a lot of money in a short amount of time. The first and honestly best way to make money on Instagram is by selling your own products. You can either sell physical or digital products. I always prefer digital, especially for passive income, because like we talked about in Etsy, physical products require manual labor and digital products do not. Once you create a digital product, you can just sell that product forever. Saying that though, you definitely can still make money with physical products. And if you're going the physical product route, I would really recommend looking into drop shipping or something along those lines where you don't actually come in contact with the physical product. The second way to make money on Instagram is through shout outs. These honestly don't generate that much money unless you're directly working with a brand and producing content for them. 
But if you're just shouting out somebody on Instagram, then you can expect to make 0.1% of however many followers you have. So for example, if you had 10,000 followers, 0.1% of that would be $10. And if you had 100,000 followers, 0.1% of that would be $100. I want you to just keep in mind whenever you do do a shout out that you could have made more money just selling that product yourself. And this rule can definitely be changed depending on your niche, especially if you are a personal brand. That honestly does not apply to a personal brand. And also if you're in the business and finance niche, you can probably charge a lot more than 0.1%. The third way to monetize Instagram is through affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing is essentially where you market somebody else's product and then every single piece that you sell, you receive a small percentage of the revenue earned on that sale. So how do you grow an Instagram page from zero to 100,000? I'm not gonna talk about this a bunch, but just a little bit, just give a basic overview. To grow an Instagram page from scratch for the first 8,000 followers, I recommend just doing follow for follow. This is a grueling process, but once you reach 8,000 followers, then you can grow organically through hashtags and it requires a lot less work. And remember, I was talking about it's okay to put in work in the beginning, as long as the passive income stream pays off in the long run. I have an entire video going over how to grow an Instagram page from scratch. So if you're interested in that, then just go check the link in my description. All right, so let's say that you've grown your Instagram page already. How do you automate it? In order to automate an Instagram page, you have to hire a social media manager who will basically run the page for you. I personally hire one of my friends and I do a split revenue model. So. I give him half of all the revenue that I make on the page. And in turn, he runs the page for me. He posts all the posts, reaches out to all the brands, does all the sponsorships, basically everything. There's literally almost no work required by me. And so I split the revenue with him and we both make some good money. However, for most people, hiring a social media manager and just paying them a set amount each month, as long as you're making more than that from your Instagram page, is pretty good. Overall, Instagram is a great option for people looking to start making a side income. Once you've grown that page, there are so many ways to monetize an Instagram page. For example, over this last month, Instagram has announced the Reels bonuses, and we've made, I think, around $1,000 so far just through Instagram's Reels bonuses. That's not even counting shout outs or me selling any products. That's just from Instagram itself. So by having an Instagram page, you open yourself up to the opportunities that come along with that. All right, let's head over to the next one. All right, so the next passive income stream on this list is actually stocks. In the last year, I've probably made around $7,500 just from the appreciation of stocks, not even counting all the other ways I make money from stocks. That's just appreciation, and that requires absolutely no effort by me. Once I buy these stocks, I literally just forget about them and leave them to do their thing. So how do you invest in stocks? Well, it's actually a lot simpler than you'd think. Brokerages such as Robinhood have made investing extremely easy. All you have to do is sign up for an account, and within around three clicks, you can buy and sell stocks. However, we have to keep in mind that not all stocks are good. Some stocks can lose you a lot of money, and some stocks can make you a lot of money. The problem is picking those stocks. In the stock market, there are funds called ETFs. This stands for exchange traded funds. These ETFs track different stock market metrics. So for example, VOO, which is Vanguard's S&P 500 ETF, that tracks the S&P 500, which is the top 500 US stocks on the market. This means that VOO holds a very small portion of each of the top 500 US stocks. So when you buy VOO, you own a portion of every single top 500 US stock. And ETFs like this are extremely safe because if one of those stocks in the S&P 500 were to go down, you would still have 499 stocks holding the, the price up. Or in other words, in stock market terms, you are diversified. ETFs are by far the best option for beginners because they are extremely safe. For example, VOO has only had one negative return in the last 10 years. So I wanted to really quickly touch on crypto because I also have made a lot of money from crypto appreciation this year. My thoughts on crypto are it is still very risky. And if you are a beginner, I probably would not recommend getting into it unless you want to put in that research and that time to learn more about it and decide on your own. I cannot in good conscience recommend you to buy crypto and I could also get sued if you lose money. So yeah, but I personally own crypto, but that does not mean that you should as well. And if you want to sign up for Robinhood and start buying these ETFs or individual stocks, then I have a link in the description that you can check out. And if you use that link and deposit $100, then you could get an entirely free stock. Overall, stocks and crypto are a great way to put your money to work. And if you're not already doing this, then I totally recommend that you do. Keep in mind, I'm not a financial advisor. 
And of course, you can lose money in the stock market, so make sure to do your research beforehand. All right, so my third passive income stream is a little bit weird, and that is breeding snakes. This is one of the best ways to make passive... Oop, Jesus Christ. So the snakes I breed are called ball pythons, and this is an example of one. This girl is a het sunset, which means she has the sunset trait, but see, she doesn't exhibit the sunset, so she just looks like a normal ball python. But when I breed her, then 25% of her offspring will have this bright orange color that kind of looks like a sunset. There is an absolutely huge market for these animals, and they're so cute. Look at him. So when you breed these steaks, there are tons and tons of genes that you can work with, and you can produce some extremely cool combinations of snakes. I'll show you guys some in this video. So ball pythons can range anywhere from $50 to even $175,000. I think that was the most expensive one ever sold. Once they are bred, these girls can lay an average of six to 12 babies, and you can breed them around once a year, so you get around six to 12 snakes per female snake you have every year. You can imagine how this has some potential to make some really good money. Of course, there are other costs associated with snake breeding. For one, you have to buy food for them, you have to buy bedding, you have to pay for electricity for their heating because they require a pretty hot environment. The good thing about this is that a $50 snake and a $5,000 snake cost the exact same to take care of. So if you're actually taking this seriously as a business, then you are going to want to invest in some high-end snakes up front so you can make more money while spending the same amount of money. All right, so how is this a passive income stream? It seems like you're actively working to breed these snakes. Well, I'm really not. I only feed these snakes about once a week and then once a year I breed them. So it takes me about an hour every week to take care of these snakes. And then also every month you have to change their bedding, but that's about it. This business can be scaled pretty high. I mean, I know people who have warehouses of a thousand snakes and then each of those a thousand snakes is worth like five to ten thousand dollars each has ten babies that is a load of money obviously you're not going to start out that big but it can be something to work up to so the last passive income stream on this list is actually credit cards now i know exactly what you're thinking credit cards are not passive income that's just debt well actually they are and it's through a process called credit card churning. Credit card churning is essentially where you take advantage of credit card companies sign up bonuses. So you see those point offers, so it's like 60,000 points to sign up for the Chase Sapphire Preferred. You take advantage of those and you basically sign up for a new credit card about every year. So when you take advantage of these points offers, you actually get rewarded with a pretty significant amount of money. For example, the Chase Sapphire Preferred, which has a 60,000 point sign up bonus, that is worth up to around $850 in free travel, or just $600 cash. For a couple minutes of work to sign up for that credit card, that's a pretty good amount of money. And these credit card bonuses can range from $50 on the low end to around $1,500 on the high end. You really don't wanna open more than one about every year because most of these cards have an annual fee and those annual fees can really add up. Also, whenever you sign up for a new credit card, they do a, something called a hard pull on your credit. So they basically look at your credit history and that temporarily brings down your credit score. So you don't wanna just keep bringing it down and down and down and down before it has time to go back up. In my most recent video, I went to Mexico and I actually got that flight for completely free just by signing up for the Chase Sapphire Preferred. And guess what? I still have enough points left over to fly there and back all over again. So you must be like, what's the catch? And there is a small catch, but it's actually very avoidable. When you sign up for these cards, there's usually a minimum spending requirement. For example, on the Chase Sapphire Preferred, it was spend $3,000 in the first four months, I'm pretty sure. And you may be thinking, why spend $3,000 to get $850 in travel. That makes no sense. That's just negative, you know, $2,150. If that were actually the case, then yes, you'd be right. That would be a horrible investment. But there is a way to get around that. To hit the spending limit and not just waste money, you just have to spend money on your normal things. For example, how I hit the spending limit on my Chase Sapphire Preferred, I just bought some new camera gear and then also just bought some groceries. And after a couple months, I hit that $3,000 mark and got my free $850. And that's pretty much it for credit card churning. You can definitely go a lot deeper than that, but that's just a pretty base level overview. If you're interested in this, I will definitely link my favorite travel cards down below. For example, the Chase Sapphire Preferred, which you can get 60,000 points when you sign up. And if you sign up using the link in my description, then I also get a small reward as well. So 
it's a win-win for both of us. I'll also leave a beginner card down there for people who haven't started building their credit yet, but want to. Always just make sure to remember that you need to pay off your credit card in full each month. Thank you all so much and have a great day.